Heritage Month. And over the next few weeks, we'll be celebrating all that goes into a great heritage, a great legacy. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. Stick around. We'll be embracing some of Jamaica's rich heritage inside these pages. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world. Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, October 3. Jamaica's tourism numbers continue to rise with stopover arrivals up 7% for the period September 1 to 21. That represents 84,402 more visitors to our shores. Permanent Secretary in the Tourism Ministry Jennifer Griffith gave the update to tourism stakeholders at the official opening of the breathless Montego Bay Resort and Spa recently. Ms. Griffith said the investments that are pouring into the country are an indication that Jamaica is being viewed as a top destination in the international marketplace. We are fully committed to the development of our tourism industry, but we understand that this would not be possible without the support of all our tourism partners. I therefore thank the investors for this show of confidence in our beautiful island. The increase in arrivals for September follows a 6.9% increase in stopover arrivals for the first eight months of the year. The January to August period also registered a 5.1% increase in cruise passenger arrivals. More Jamaicans are poised to be homeowners through the National Housing Trust NHT's Private Developers Program. It seeks to attract private developers to take on and finance NHT projects, thereby accelerating home ownership for low-income earners. NHT Chairman Ambassador Nigel Clark says seven parcels of land covering 3,000 acres have been identified for the program. Since it was announced in August and advertised locally and internationally, Ambassador Clark says the program has received considerable interest from developers. He says the NHT will continue to accept submissions until the end of October, followed by a pre-qualification of participants in November. Construction is expected to begin sometime in the 2018-19 fiscal year, with the majority of the houses being built under the program to cost $5 million. If we are able to achieve these objectives, then the NHT, in partnership with our developers, will be able to add more houses at a faster pace, at more affordable costs, and to achieve the Prime Minister's objective of surpassing 15000 in three years. The NHD's chairman was addressing Friday's handing over ceremony for the Berkshire Court housing scheme in Spanish Town. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the development of the country's training institutions is vital for the success of economic growth through the logistics sector. Mr. Holness says that as global efficiency increases, so too does the need for specialized businesses and workers to serve the growing demand. The pool of ideas and human talent from these institutions is the foundation of innovation and cutting-edge solutions. The Prime Minister was speaking at the Caribbean Maritime University's inaugural Charter Day ceremony last Thursday. I am confident that the CMU will continue not only to be Jamaica's and the Caribbean leading source of talent and ideas in the areas of logistics and maritime technology, but will also be seen as one of the world's best institutions for maritime training. National Security State Minister Pernell Charles Jr. is urging developers of technology to position themselves to contribute to growth through the introduction of new platforms and ideas. Minister Charles was speaking at the UNDP Social Good Summit recently. We are thirsty for solutions. We are thirsty for those persons who are going to feel comfortable looking towards their ideals, because that, my friends, that is what is going to challenge us to push ahead and to create the Jamaica that will see no poverty, the Jamaica that will see no crime. Government is assuring parents that the introduction of the human papillomavirus HPV vaccine in schools is not mandatory. 
The Ministry of Education made the declaration in a release while indicating its support of the move by the Ministry of Health. The Education Ministry says parents have the option to indicate their refusal on the form that is being issued to them. It's in line with the Ministry's general policy which dictates that school nurses are not authorized to administer unprescribed drugs such as those categorized as over-the-counter medication. Meanwhile, officers of the Ministry of Health held sensitization sessions with school nurses on Friday. The Ministry of Health has proposed that the HPV vaccine be offered to grade 7 girls in all schools. The initiative is a proactive move by the government to assist in preventing cervical cancer. Data from the ministry points to 392 women being diagnosed with cervical cancer in Jamaica each year and 185 deaths from the disease. And finally, the deadline for submissions to the inaugural Public Sector Corporate Governance Awards for public bodies has been extended to Friday, October 6. The award was launched last year by the Finance Ministry to reflect the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act and Corporate Governance Framework. Chairman of the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica's Corporate Governance Committee, Greta Bogues, says the main objective of the award is to promote awareness and adherence to the principles of good corporate governance. We want to encourage improvements in the standards of corporate governance for public entities. And most importantly, we want to recognize those public bodies that have established these high standards of corporate governance, disclosure, and practice. Ms. Bog was addressing a JIS think tank on Friday. The top public bodies expected to receive the award in early December. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thanks for watching. Productivity, Pathway to Prosperity, a message brought to you by the Jamaica Productivity Center, a department of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Want to know the law pertaining to renting a house? What about the procedure if you are arrested? Or what is defined as corruption? Then click on the Ministry of Justice website. It has information on every law passed in Jamaica. The House of Parliament portal also has the more recent year's pieces of legislation. The sites are easy to search and the files are downloadable. Make access to justice your business. Know your rights. There is an element of Jamaican society some of us don't like to talk about. That's the crime rate. But turning a blind eye to the issue is not the solution. The government is taking aim at the crime monster, a threat to our rich heritage, through a reformed justice system. The latest development witnessed the creation of a new court. I were to uh, make an evaluation, I would say that the work done has exceeded expectations. In December 2015, the justice system was plunged into tragedy. The four-story coroner's court building that was located on Duke Street in downtown Kingston was gutted by fire. This left the workers without an office and forced to work out of shared spaces at the Sutton Street Court. But like a butterfly that finds new life through a caterpillar, a newly modernized coroner's and special coroner's court has risen. The Ministry of Justice acquired and renovated space at 119A Maxfield Avenue in St. Andrew to house the court. 
Over $22 million was spent to renovate the building, which was recently handed over to the judiciary. And even though the work of the court continued, I am proud to say that this facility, which is the new home of the coroners and special coroners courts, is really well appointed, has adequate space, and has completely new furnishings. Indeed, we spent just over $4.5 million to ensure that all the furniture that you will see are absolutely new. The contract for the refurbishing of this court was signed in February of this year. The refurbished premises will no doubt contribute to the efficient administration and operations of the courts. The exercise of the jurisdictions and functions of the courts can now take place in an environment that is in keeping with the dignity and importance of the coroner's offices. The judges' chambers, you will see, are quite spacious. The courtrooms are comfortable. There's adequate seating for the users of the courts, and there are facilities for the staff, such as a canteen or a pantry. The staff is exceedingly happy for their new comfortable work environment. A coroner is an officer who holds inquests on the bodies of persons suspected to have died by violence or accident in order to determine whether the death was natural or caused. Over 100 cases per year are dealt with by the Jamaican court. But I'm pleased to see that the court has finally found another location which has been refurbished and refurbished in a manner that is very aesthetically pleasing. Work has been done, much work has been done, as you have heard, and I commend the Ministry of Justice, Mr. Vivian Gordon, who led the charge, and all those who worked on this building in order to make it what it is. It was on this architect that the government bestowed its confidence to transform the space into the new court. In terms of the orientation and level to the, the, the courtrooms and the facilities that are there, it is a very complete example of what a court facility is supposed to offer. So how the public are served, how they interact with the members of staff, how they utilize the courtroom, the, the, the amenities are all there. And I don't, as I said before, I don't want to, say, I don't want to make it sound as it is there is no room for improvement, but it is a very good example of how, how the, the court environment is supposed to be. In the process of designing for the Ministry of Justice and in terms of designing courthouses, your clients are varied. You have judges, you have clerks, you have the staff of the court, you have police, you have all the people that have to interact with the justice system. But the, the process is designed, and then you have to get into the process of creating the drawings, and then you have to get the process of tender for the actual construction phase, and then you have to do the supervision of the work. The ministry is fully aware of what our responsibilities are, and we are constantly striving to ensure that facilities that are provided for the public and the staff and the judges and the, the, the attorneys is of a standard that we are, we are proud to call our own. The new court will serve as a space to create and preserve a just society, inclusive of a timely delivery of justice. Jamaica comes alive for Jamaica 55. The Jamaica Information Service is inviting primary, secondary, and tertiary students to catch the vibes and join in the celebration by participating in this year's staging of the JIS Heritage Competition. Primary and prep school children, ages 9 to 12, enter the essay competition and tell us how you would want to see Jamaica in 55 years. High schoolers, enter the poster competition. Show us your artistic interpretations of Jamaica throughout her 55 years in a poster titled Jamaica 55. Posters may be designed digitally or illustrated. Zoom, click, snap. Yes, tertiary students, the photo competition is back. Capture an image that best represents Jamaica 55. 
For more information on the competition rules and how to submit entries, visit the JIS website at www.jis.gov.jm. You may also send an email to heritagesa at jis.gov.jm, heritagepostal at jis.gov.jm, or heritagephoto at jis.gov.jm, or call us at 926-3590-4. The deadline for all entries is October 31, 2017. So ready, set, go for prizes galore. JIS Heritage Competition 2017, celebrating Jamaica 55. There is one entity that is considered the reservoir of things and stories that embody the qualities, tradition, and features of Jamaican life that have been developed and continued over its decades of nationhood. The name says it all, the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. Let's step inside this downtown Kingston landmark. <music> The Jamaica National Heritage Trust is more than just a building that houses artifacts. It's a symbol of our post and pre-independence period. Also known as Headquarters House, the JNHT is just one of many buildings that tell the story of our rich history. It got the name because it was once the military headquarters of the War Office in 1814. The building was constructed in 1755 and was home of Thomas Hibbert. On November 12 that same year, the Legislative Assembly met there while Hibbert was acting as Speaker. It later became the seat of government and the office of the Colonial Secretariat from 1872 to 1960. The government of the day in 1872 decided to move the capital from Spanish Town into Kingston this became the center of governance. This is where the Legislative Council used to sit. And after 1944, this is where the beginning of governments by the Jamaican people, elected through universal adult suffrage, became the seat of governance. After 1944, we had a number of other constitutions which led us to self-government and ultimately to independence in 1962. So it was in this room that Bustamante and Manley and other great luminaries of the legislative period of governance from 1944 used to persuade their party members to vote in their favor. And as a result of a combined effort, we agreed to become independent and we negotiated with Britain for the purposes of independence on June the 6th, 1962. The size of the chamber would suggest that the number of government officials were few. As a result of independence in 1962, the government also decided that they needed a new building to hold a larger parliament. And that's why Gordon House was created next door. So that's the joining relationship between this legislative council building, which is now the headquarters of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust, and Gordon House next door in which our parliament sits. It's a very exciting corner of Jamaica, a very exciting corner of Kingston. And of course, the political parties today, when they march to Gordon House, one party moves from Headquarters House, as it is still known as, and the other party moves from the northern side of Duke Street and comes together in the parliament. The cabinet room, or the room in which the government uh, ministers sat is upstairs, is in fact the boardroom of the trustees of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. Today the building is used for a variety of different purposes which include the storage of artifacts as well as the various departments of the Jamaica National Heritage Trust. So it continues to be a very important building of history and heritage for our people. The fact that it was built in 1755 means that over these last 250 plus years, it has been subject to all sorts of natural disasters, including a fire next door, which nearly took it down. So hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, and other natural disasters, this building has been able to survive them all.
Did you know that it was from this building on October 12, 1865, that Governor Edward John Eyre planned his attack against the St. Thomas Freedom Fighters? He declared martial law from this house on Friday, October 13. And it was also here that the right excellent George William Gordon was arrested in 1865 and taken to Marat Bay, where he was executed. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Nugget. Original. How much do you know about your country, Jamaica? Need a refresher? The food! The food of love. Sounds so really make you rub and scrub. Sounds so like I'm gonna leave my middle leave on. The people! The natural beauty! Jamaica is the largest in the Caribbean that speaks English. Even though we look small on the map, the country covers over 4,000 square miles. Way back then, when your mother's father's uncle's picnic son was alive, we were emancipated. We no longer had to work as slaves. Yes! And on August 6, 1962, we became independent. We were now responsible for ourselves, and we were the first English-speaking country in the Caribbean to do so. Ending slavery was not the only good thing. In 1944, Mommy and Daddy got the chance to choose who should run the country by voting. Did you know that the largest parish in Jamaica is St. Anne? And you'll never guess what the longest river is. It's the Rio Mino in Clarendon. Our national flag is also unique. The Jamaican, Libyan, and Mauritanian flags are the only ones that do not have the colors of the American flag. Red, white, or blue. And did you know that Jamaica was the first commercial producer of banana in the Western Hemisphere? The Manchester Golf Club is also the oldest golf club in the Western Hemisphere. Our Milk River Bath and Mineral Spa is the most radioactive in the world, and that's a good thing. The Kingston Harbour is the seventh largest natural harbour in the world. And do you know the birthplace of reggae music? It's right here in Jamaica. One love, one heart, let's get together and feel alright. Hear the children crying, hear the children crying. It can be black or creamy, what am I talking about? The Jamaican Blue Mountain Coffee, which so many people love. And the Jamaica rum, Daddy says, is mm -mm good. It's sell off. Jamaica is also home to the fastest man in the world. You send both to the world. And we are the first and only country to hold the male 100 meter title 
at all levels, including Olympics and World Champs. And it's not only track and field that we are good at. We do not have snow, but we do participate in the Winter Olympics. Cool runnings. Jamaica's culture is also one that will definitely light up a room. The language of emoticons, colon, capital D. Say you're in downtown Kingston and you want to get to Halfway Tree. You ask, how far is Halfway Tree from here? The response? It's just around the corner, man. Only in Jamaica when you ask, Which part are you there? I'm so far, man. Then they arrive in the next few hours. Some things just can't be said in English. You are talking too much. No, no, you just a chat to tag along, so. The food of love. My country, Jamaica, has a rich heritage and is very unique. If we all pull together, we can make it the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and to do business. This is Jamaica. This is our land. Make every effort to forge unity yeah, yeah, and resolve yeah. to work hard for our prosperity. Leaving our children a legacy of hope, breaking the shackles and smashing the old curse. This is Jamaica. This is, Jamaica. This is our land. This is our we land. have our future with God in our plan. We'll play our part. Oh, yeah. This is where the magazine closes for today. For more information on any matter mentioned in today's program, click on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. There you may find info on government programs and policies. For more television features, visit our YouTube channel. We're also on various social media sites. You may also download our app from the Google Play Store to stay informed while you're on the go. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Do have a wonderful evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.